Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to talk to you about the, all the wonderful things that are happening in the city of Missoula today. But of course, before we get into weather, I just want to give a brief announcement that that you must keep your dogs on leashes if you guys plan on going up Waterworks Hill, South Hills, or any of the hills along those ways. Check out these goats. There's goats up on the hill, so they, uh, they're asking, the city and the county are asking people to uh, put their uh, dogs on leashes um, to prevent any uh, attacks on some of the sheep that are up in the mountain. So, of course, those videos are not that great, but if you do take a look outside, you'll see a bunch of sheep roaming up in the mountains grazing, uh, so you can check that out as well. Um, I got some weather for you guys. So it is currently 50 degrees outside. It's going to be a high of 79, a low of 52. You can expect your highs to get into the 70s pretty much and stay that way. Um, well, and then the weekend, you're going to have a couple chances of thunderstorms and showers happening throughout this week as well. So um, before I get into news, I'm going to throw it to a PSA. We're going to have uh, a couple guests on uh, from Meals on Wheels. So stay with me. We'll be right back with Missoula Aging Services right after this. Hey guys, welcome back here. We're here with Meals on Wheels, Missoula Asian Services, and you guys are here to talk about uh, the importance of Meals on Wheels program and how it brings meals to those um, who need it. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's nice nutritious meals, basically. Yeah. Um, I'll let you guys kind of explain it a little bit more for those of you who don't know what Meals on Wheels is. So certainly. Yeah. What is it? Well, Meals on Wheels, we serve our homebound population here in Missoula. And we're looking actually for more wonderful volunteers for Meals on Wheels, yes. like Greg here. And uh, so, Greg, tell us yeah. about uh, <laughs> your experiences with the Meals on Wheels program. And you've been doing it for about two and a half years. Yes, yes. Uh, it's a wonderful experience. Not only do you get to work with wonderful staff, uh, you get to work with other wonderful volunteer drivers, but you also get to meet. A wonderful population out there that we serve mm -hmm. the clients that it you you make some really neat uh, bonds yeah. and it's just a wonderful experience yep and the importance of, of Meals on the Wheels program associated with Missoula Asian services yes. to uh, the um, to promote, promote the dignity independence and dignity and, and health, health of older adults and those who care for them. Yes. <laughs> I'm trying to like say it with you, but then I, I realize that I'm failing miserably. I'm sorry. That's okay. I, I've had you, I've had Missoula Agent Service on here all the time and it's always great to have you guys here to talk about Thanks many of your us. many programs that provides seniors with an opportunity to help each other, mm -hmm. help the community, uh, work with many different avenues as well, but also anybody out there can work with the Meals on Wheels programs as long as they have a clean driving record. Clean driving yeah. record and a flexible schedule. So when we deliver meals, we deliver meals Monday through Friday, and the time commitment is from about 10 o'clock in the morning um, until, I say, until 2 in the afternoon. Some of our routes are much, uh, a much more distance. Right. We go all the way out 9 Mile, Lolo, Clinton, Potomac, we go right. all over the place. Uh, so some of the routes 
they take they take a little bit longer. Yeah, I remember that most of the time it starts at ten a.m. Yep, which is a reasonable time, and then you basically go until you uh, are done. Yep. And then you go yes. go back and you take some of the bags that you have collected, and it's it's basically nice little uh, uh, lunch large lunch bags that you take yeah. to people. Um, I noticed that on Fridays uh, you only do it five days a week, but Fridays you give them bigger meals. Yep, we'll send frozen meals for uh, for our clients to heat up on the weekend, so they have a a hot meal for their Saturday and Sunday meals as well. You know. Um, we're also looking to get more volunteer drivers in, and the in addition to providing that that quality nutrition, one third of a person's daily nutrition uh, requirements are what what's met with the Meals on Wheels. We also provide that safety check, that daily check yes. in, and Greg can speak to that. It's so important yeah. because all of the clients we serve are homebound. Oftentimes, the only people that they see is their Meals on Wheels driver. The driver, mm -hmm. yes. Very and often. It, and it's really crazy. You know, like, I constantly, I'm, I'm like, as I'm getting older, I'm like really constantly thinking that what if I slip and fall mm -hmm. and then maybe I hurt myself to a point where I can't get up mm -hmm. and I need to f figure out a way to get to a certain point. And, uh, you know, like, and, and then you're, you don't know who's going to be there. Like, right. your phone's not anywhere near you. It's just like, it's nice just to really have those kind of checkups. Yep. Just to knock on the door, nobody answers, like, huh, this is kind of fishy. Yeah. And it's always nice to kind of report that and be like, okay, let's have some people check in. Yep. And, you know, it's, it's nice uh, checks. For Absolutely. Sure. And our drivers nice. are very much watchdogs, you know, as far as being concerned for the clients. If they think something is awry, like you were just describing, they will call us up at Missoula Aging Services and let us know what's going on. And then our, our staff, social workers, can follow up and check, mm -hmm. make sure that they're doing all right. All right. So. All right. So, uh, it seems like the, uh, a lot of people are in this program and you guys are always looking for new drivers. Where yeah. can people find more information? If you go to our Missoula Aging Services website, it's www.missoulaagingservices.org. Uh, there are volunteer applications right there. Um, and you can also learn more about the Meals on Wheels program. For example, we served over 100,000 wow. meals last year alone. Wow. Yep, and we couldn't do it without our volunteers. No way could we do it and, without them. And the program seems to just get bigger and bigger every year. Yep. And one of the things you always need are drivers. Yes, indeed. So if you're interested, resilientagentservices.com, or you can call them at... 728-7682. All right, thanks, guys, very much for joining me. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. All right, so we'll be right back right after this. This looks really interesting too. This, this one is, is about erosion. This is our erosion table. So we have water flowing through um, what mimics sand. It's actually made of recycled plastic pieces. Okay. Uh, but you can see the sediment moving and kids are able to adjust where the water is flowing from and move the sand and maybe create a dam and see how the oh, water will away and it's eventually, a, eventually right eventually, the yeah. power of water is yeah. pretty extreme and I see that there there is always carnage yes. <laughs> you know. well, it's fun differences in these enormous swaths of white matter. And again, we're going back over 10 years ago now. Nothing is white matter. White, it's cabling tissue. Who cares? You know, it, it, what, could, what in cabling tissue could reduce pedophilia? Or much else, for, for that matter. But there it was, plain as day, these huge tracts with, with a big, uh, big ugly name. Uh, th this is the uh, superior occipitofrontal fasciculus of both hemispheres, and uh, there's another big chunk. Again, you're looking at the left hemisphere, 
The only difference between the teal colored areas and the magenta colored areas are that the teal is in the left hemisphere and the magenta is in the right hemisphere. It's just easier to, to see that way. Uh, and if you're gay, you're not going to pick you know, like blue and red. You know, it's kind of you know, teal and magenta and robin's egg and cerulean. And that's what we should do with that, with that uh, uh, FAS test. Right, if we had a gay test, as quickly as you can, name as many different shades of blue. <laughs> a couple of years ago now, I had a client um, in a pro bono case, doing my, doing my pro bono work, um, and he had some cognitive limitations. Um, among other things, he didn't know how to read. Um, and it, I don't think that it was completely that he did not know how to read. I'm not sure that he had the cognitive ability to learn to read. And I would have been extremely uncomfortable saying to him, I'm only going to do part of your divorce. Because I, I'm not sure he could have really understood that. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about a little bit of news that's happening here. Uh, if you haven't noticed in the last couple of uh, um, uh, days this week that uh, two teens got shot the other day at Sentinel High School. The shooting, which was reported at 6.37 p.m. Sunday evening, occurred in a parking lot south side of the school between Sentinel and the Spartan Park. Of course, the two minors who have received minor injuries are not associated with MCPS schools and are not... Uh, from there. So uh, basically the officers of the Missoula Police Department, University of Montana Police Department, and Missoula's County Sheriff's Office, Office, which brought along a K-9 unit, formed a perimeter Sunday night that stretched from the site of the shooting to Russell Street to search the area for hours before calling an off shortly at 9 p.m. They're off, the officers were able to recover the gun in question, but are asking if anyone has any information is asked to call Detective Mitch Lang at 552 Six two nine two for more information as well. Of course, in an article on the Billings Gazette, health officials are warning about the spread of bed bugs during the vacation season. So imagine, hey, you're gonna go on vacation, you sleep in a uh, maybe a bed and whatnot, and you realize that you feel a little itchy, and then you realize that um, you may have taken some of that. Um, bed bugs home with you. So they're asking that. Uh, to be a little more aware, especially when you go to Airbnbs. Um, hotels have a more cleaning procedure for a lot of the stuff where they um, clean in these areas, but they want to make sure that people who go uh, to um, uh, to places like Airbnbs and stuff off, just be a little more aware of the beds. And bed bugs tend to like the areas between your um, bed, of course, because hence the word bed bugs, and the area where uh, the the brim of the bed, you know, like the bed stand, like where the the bed frame hooked up to the bed frame. So that's they like to have in those like little crevasses areas. And um, the female bed bugs has the ability to lay up to five eggs a day and about 200 in her lifetime. So one female uh, bed bug can have a widespread reaction to um, what's going on with the, with the beds. Our, can, Okay, let's let's move on to some national news. Okay, so the Trump travel ban was supported by the Ninth Circuit Supreme Court the other day, which means the version 3.0 of the altered mean change of when he first started his administration, he uh, implemented the travel ban as many of his ex executive orders from five mainly Muslim countries and an add-on to the ban travelers from North Korea and the government officials from Venezuela. Um, of course, the denuclear um, of North Korea may play into a factor of future 4.0 adjustments, but Trump himself said that the version is one that considers watered down. Um, what does that mean exactly? Even more teeth for ICE and many other... <laughs> okay, so uh, detained in, um, okay, anyways, of course, um, uh, 
<laughs> okay. Um, okay. Anyways, in, in April, the Justice Department said that nearly 700,000 cases were pending in immigration courts, a rise from 519,000 cases in 2016, based on the zero tolerance policy with immigration in the last couple of years as well. Um, for now, the border agency is one of many parts of Trump's administration that is calling on the Republican-controlled Congress to solve the problem by passing a comprehensive immigration law. Thus concludes all the... Uh, news that's happening in and around the city of Missoula, the state of Montana, and the world. So, um, I, I guess I have a musical guest. So, without further ado, here is Josh. Oh. Hey, Josh. Hey, Scott. What's, uh, what's going on, dude? Um, well, I was in the neighborhood. Uh, wait, just give me Obviously. <laughs> yeah, um, and I, I had my uh, custom Yamaha gold piano with me. <laughs> this is this um, like a plug this for is a Yamaha? custom piece. Uh, I made it myself from scratch. Um, if by scratch I would mean a can of spray paint, which is exactly what I mean. Um, so. I am taking requests mainly from you, Scott. Uh, oh, yeah. I don't know if there's anyone else is going to give you requests. This isn't the call-in show. That's okay. That's all right. Would you... The, uh, um, I, I guess if you're going to be here, you should at least try to be on camera one. Ah, hello, camera one. You're, you're kind of on camera two, and you're kind of being blocked by the, uh, sh the television screen. Oh, wait, wait. I got this. Like, right, right about... Yeah. Here. You probably even move a little bit this way. <laughs> so. A little bit? You will crush there? Mm -hmm. A little more this way? A little cramp? A little more this way. Look right. Okay, I got you. Right right below the L. Yeah. Shout out to Lolo. <laughs> okay, um, so I I suppose he's going to be... Uh, he'll be playing some music for you along the way. Um, there's definitely not much lighting to support him as it is to support me. I see my glowing hair compared to his um, dark in the corner vibe. Oh, check this out. I, uh, <laughs> I, I learned the theme song to Wake Up Missoula. Oh, cool. Wait, wait, wait. I got this. <laughs> That's not right. <laughs> no, no, that's... Maybe if I try it on this one. Is that, you got that? No. There. Welcome to Wake Up Missoula. Yo, well, well, welcome to the uh, Wake Up Missoula. Do you call it the Wake Up Missoula show? I call it the Wake Up wake the up Missoula, Missoula the show. Wake Up Missoula the show? No, the Wake Up the Missoula the, the show. The Wake Up the Missoula the yeah. show part two? No, no, there's never a part two. It's, it's, it's ongoing. It's a series. Oh. Part two implies that it's, there was a part one. Do you have seasons? I would probably say that this is probably season three. Three? Season one had uh, me, Noel, and Josh. Oh, okay. <laughs> Not you, Josh. But Josh season many. Josh many. Yeah. And Noel McAvoy. Uh, season two just had me and um, uh, Noel. Season three just has me. And okay. season four, I'm going to try to utilize a bit of um, motion, mm. a little bit of After Effects, and then have absolutely no one hosting the show live. Oh, just okay. Just imagine like a giant puppet. So it's a little person. bit, it's like reduction. You could use the VR kit for that. You could just uh, kind of puppet it from uh, yeah. outside. I th the and I do believe that the uh, VR system does have uh, a thing in place, yeah. which is available at MCAT because VR is Yes, here VR MCAT. is available at MCAT. Uh, you should come check it out. VR it's, uh, is the future, and it's amazing. <laughs> it, the future is bright, <laughs> especially when you uh, uh, strap uh, two giant TVs to your face. Yes, especially it's like when really you have bright. two large LED displays directly in your eyeballs. Yep. Uh, science is still out. Do you, uh, uh, well, you have a song prepared for us about VR? 
Uh, <laughs> you you sang that one song in that PSA, remember? Don't make me do it. I, I almost have sure. to make you do don't it. Don't make me do it. It's kind of a, a, a penance for um, dropping by. Is it okay if I do it in a spoken word format? Yeah. Okay. Uh, VR. VR. That's who we are. Virtual people living in a virtual world. Digimon. Digimon. Digital monsters. Check out VR at MCAT. <laughs> nice. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> it's really nice that we actually got the whole song rather than the um, the, 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 the watered-down version yeah. from the PSA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even remember uh, what that PSA was about. All, was it just about VR? It was about MCAT and yeah. Saturday drop-ins. That's right. Saturday drop-ins are cool. Yeah. Um, and then I'll, maybe later I'll ask you about making um, about the hoverboard. But th- this is more oh, of a, yeah. like a, a, a... Does that thing a, still work? The hoverboard? Yeah, the hoverboard. Of course hover- it does. Yeah. I'm still mad that those are called hoverboards. Yeah, they don't hover. They only give the illusion of hovering. But then again, I guess virtual reality only gives you a virtual reality. They, so. might, they might as well just call it a, um, a snorry board. We could call it a virtual hoverboard. Because here's a little uh, tech knowledge for those of you who are aspiring filmmakers. A snorry rig is where you st- strap a camera to your body and the whole world moves behind you while you stay perfectly steady on camera. So if you ever see like I've the movie The Hangover, videos. they do that with Mick, Mick Jagger in the, in the movie where, you know how Mick Jagger's hips are swaying all the time, but everything, like the camera's moving with his swaying, everything yeah. around him is moving. So if you get a chance, you should totally check that out. But you know, I'm gonna. I think we should take a little break from now, and um, I'm gonna throw it to uh, Dub and stuff. Oh, and cool. um, it is from the movie Behind Office Doors. And mm-hmm. when I come back, I'll talk about some of the things that are happening in the city. Would you like to be part of that? Yeah, sure. Okay. I'd love to. We'll be right back after this. Your wife called. Well, I'll tell her I call her back as soon as this camera stops shaking so much. Man, I really need to get a back door to this place. I hate walking through crowds of people. I have in, I have in, I have in, I have anxiety. Hey, could you tell the construction workers to build a back door to this place? All right, I have the agenda all ready for you today. All right, let's hear it. Is that little uh, b- person Petey gonna be uh, coming for this meeting later today? I really like that little Petey. He's a uh, uh, a chip off the old block, as I always like to say. So, uh, tell me what's on the agenda. Well, well, your uh, 2 o'clock and your 4 o'clock canceled, so I have to figure out something to fill that space. My mom canceled dinner with me again? Her loss. Uh, maybe put that 2 o'clock for hot yoga? Oh, wow, that's surprisingly healthy of you. Well, it's not just that. The girl-to-guy ratio is out of this world. And maybe I'll guess I'll get like a, uh, a massage at 4 o'clock. I don't need to eat anyways. I can eat later. Oh, by the way, did the president call me earlier this week? Um, I think you mean the president of that nonprofit? Oh, geez, you're right. Oh, man, everyone's some kind of executive president or whatever of some kind of nonprofit. Well, I got that band to play at your party. What? You're not referring to Hoopa Stank, are you? Uh, this is kind of awkward. Um, maybe we should talk about something else. <laughs> Remember that vacation we took together in the Cayman Islands? <laughs> oh, yes, I remember that very clearly. Uh, remind me again what happened at the Cayman Islands. Uh, maybe it wasn't you? I like to drink during the day, you know? <laughs> Do you think it was a bad idea to install a bar in a workplace? It's kind of unprofessional. Oh, uh, what do you know? What was I saying again? You're about to just order lunch pretty soon. No, no. I'm just trying to figure out how to deal with this crippling depression. You know what I need? 
I need, um... Well, maybe you need to get your mind off of it. It's really important just to think about the people who really Soft care. and fluffy bunnies. That's what always makes me feel better. Uh, yeah. You know, I have a good idea for our next vacation. We go to Compton. Well, I guess that would be nice. Hey guys, welcome back. Now we're going to talk about some uh, birds. Uh, the birds are out. It's a, if you, hey, if you guys got a chance, look up the uh, Montana Hellgate Canyon Osprey. Um, maybe just look up Osprey um, Missoula and you'll be able to find a nice little live feed of the Osprey. The nice little hatchling has hatched. Uh, the mama bird, I assume, is watching the baby bird, as you can see here. Um, I have a, a, a nice little song I'm just going to make up for just the baby bird. If you wanna, uh, okay. If you wanna, uh, do you want the hip hop groove or just a regular groove? Surprise me. I like the hip hop groove. Yo, yo. Shout yeah. out to ha uh, Yamaha keyboards for having <laughs> the sickest beats on the planet. Oh, oh. The bird is gonna fly. He's gonna fly someday. You just don't know when the bird is gonna fly. He's listening to our song. He's bobbing his head and he's ready to do something. <laughs> Yeah. Almost, I almost got it there. You almost got it. You got something for me? Um, uh, here, let me try. Um, a little baby bird sitting in his big nest, going around eating all the little worm pests. He's going and sitting in his cool nest. Uh, go to bed, bird. Peace out. Shout out to Yamaha. I'm sorry I can't. Uh, rap. Hey, pick a number, uh, will you, between <laughs> zero and 500? Um, let's go 433. 433. Yeah, why not? Okay, so of course, uh, City Council, Heck. one of the bigger things that they're going to be talking about today. Mm. Um, I'm going to try to get through this. Um, um, Josh, I'm going to put in his mission to kind of somewhere distract me while I um, try to stay on task as much as possible. That is what the challenge I have put upon myself today. Larry Dunham thinks that t a tiff for the downtown art would create an unfair competition in the Missoula area. So we're starting kicking things off with public comment at the city council meeting. So here he is. Eight different art galleries off Higgins and very close to it. Right, on Higgins and very close to it. Creating uh, this situation with a tiff funds, which is obviously possibly well within his means creates another art gallery in competition with these art galleries. And these people, I'm paying the taxes for this competition. So when you look at it, look at the purpose of the TIF, not just the, the outcome of it. The outcome will be there will be another art gallery, which will be in total competition with the current existing art galleries. All right, so that was Larry Dunham. He was talking about that uh, just in terms of just like um, uh, just you know, okay. So it's in it's Montana Innocence in it's Montana Innocence Project Week, which goes into helping folks who have been lost in the system that misrepresented them in the past to get their cases reopened. And here is John Engen with the proclamation. Whereas the Montana Innocence Project is a statewide nonprofit organization comprised of attorneys, journalists, students, and volunteers dedicated to exonerating the innocent and preventing wrongful convictions, and whereas the project uses DNA and other evidence to advance credible claims of innocence, and whereas the project advances proven public policy reforms and provides training and education for students, attorneys, law enforcement, civic groups, and other Montanans across the state, and whereas the project to date has secured the exonerations of six individuals who have cumulatively spent nearly a hundred years in prison for crimes they did not commit, and whereas the project now celebrates its 10th anniversary and is dedicated to continue its work to exonerate the innocent, prevent wrongful conviction, shape public policy, and thereby improve the criminal justice system. Now, therefore, I, John Ingen, Mayor of the City of Missoula and the State of Montana, do hereby recognize the week of June 24th through 30th, 2018, as Montana Innocence Project Week. And there will be a celebration on Saturday of the good work those folks are doing. 
I will pass this evening on. All right, so that was a nice little proclamation from our mayor, John Engen, talking about uh, some of the. Uh, um, Innocence Project Week, which will wrap up um, their celebration this Saturday. Um, well, of course, what would necessarily be a short meeting was used was time used to talk about a resolution of the city of Missoula in support of the Missoula County uh, of support of hosting. Have, basically, they want to put a fifteen million dollar bond, open space bond, on the ballot, and they want to get their approval on the city level so they can get to the county level for approval to be put on to the November 2018 ballot. So basically, uh, this is a $50 million mill levy for the purpose of conservation and stewardship of responsible open space and conservation lands. And here is Brian Von Lossberg kind of reiterating the importance of the open space bond because this is a continuation of a 2006 uh bond pass that happened those years ago and now they're asking for more money to continue this process moving forward i I emphasize that we're not in a position here where we're um, passing anything that will go into effect Um, what we're doing what i view my role uh, in doing is assessing um, what might be a responsible question to put to the voters and i trust those voters uh, in this community um, to consider those questions on uh, on the merits and to make uh, an informed uh, choice as they have done for years. And I would specifically um, draw people's attention to the letter that we received from um, Rob Erickson, the chair of the Open Space Advisory Committee. I think his letter does a magnificent job of detailing this community's 40-year history, 40-plus year history with open space uh, conservation efforts uh, going back uh, to the first bond that was, I believe, in 1980. 19- 80 and then November of 95 and November of 2006. Um, there's no question in my mind that this community values open space. Um, we also have uh, a number, as we always do, we have a number of competing uh, interests and issues that we have to deal with as a city and a community. Um, I think that some view this as uh, an either-or sort of situation uh, where we can work on this thing or, uh, and obviously affordable housing is something that's very prevalent on everyone's mind. Um, I uh, hold that we can and should uh, do both. Um, so that was kind of like a uh, kind of like a long explanation about how the how important this particular uh, bond is to Brian Van Losberg and he kind of goes into more detail. This would be up to an upcoming election in November um, at this point in time. A county meeting must be set up to further this item to be placed on the ballot for November. If you want to have your uh, voices um, heard, uh, check out uh, the county commissioner's agenda item as well. Jesse Ramos, of course, uh, thinks that the open space uh, money uh, should be used for the Missoula residents. Uh, He doesn't believe that uh, some of the open space um, should be used for not doing anything with with the city just buying property and not really utilizing um, some of the uh, tax benefits they would get from people buying these properties. So here's Jesse Ramos. We have a ton of open space already. I don't see a crisis right now. And uh, again, this doesn't seem like a crisis to me. I like open space as much as the next person. But if we look at this more, I mean, I think a lot of us up here can afford that. I could afford this, but there's a lot of people in the city that can't afford that. There's, there's people that, I know we talk about Section 8 and we talk about the discounts, but you have to be impoverished to take advantage of those. There's a lot of people that are living on a fixed income, making thirty or $40,000 a year, that don't qualify for any of those benefits, and they've lived here for 40, 50 years, and they're getting taxed out of their homes. They can't afford it. The middle class is disappearing. And I just think it's important that we talk about this stuff. I mean, it, it's nice. Don't get me wrong. But we're turning Missoula into a country club. And country clubs are nice, but they're very, very expensive. And every time we raise taxes, we're raising the membership of the cost of living in Missoula. Do we really want to be that exclusive? I mean, we talk about equality all the time. I know it seems like I'm being dramatic, but I'm really trying to respectfully voice my concerns with this. I think the voters deserve to make an educated guess. 
All right, so that was Jesse Ramos explaining his uh, platform um, ag against um, this $15 million bond. John Angan responds to uh, some of Jesse Ramos's concern about um, housing, affordable housing, and providing um, people with a fixed income places. The, the notion that affordable housing and, and conservation of land and, and the connections that we built through our open space program um, are mutually exclusive uh, doesn't wash with me. The fact is that the beauty of this open space bond is in the city in particular, um, coupled with the mill levy, it will provide uh, egalitarian access to open spaces for everyone, not only just open spaces on conservation lands, but continued uh, stewardship of parks and trails, all of which we use collectively as a community um, and all of which we pay for one way or another collectively. Uh, the all right. So that was kind of uh, John Engen kind of giving a brief example of how he feels about the open space bond. Hey, many of the things that, uh, um, that I just wanted to kind of like sh give a shout out out there for is that you got to kind of Remember, this is going to be on the ballot, and depending upon how the people think that this should go, will be up in the November election as well. But, of course, I did want to throw uh, it to a former city council member, Marilyn Marler, to speak on this, and she's been advocating for open space and stewardships of the land for quite some time now. As a natural areas manager and an avid recreator in our trails and open spaces, I can tell you from a professional at perspective, we're loving these places to death. A, con a critique I've seen about this bond measure on social media and elsewhere is that we have so many open spaces we couldn't possibly use anymore, and it's just not true. People are using them so much, we need more, and we need to take care of the ones that we have. Um, we let's invest in the stewardship and make sure that our lands and our rivers are healthy for future generations. This is really important. Um, so that was Marilyn Marler uh, giving her two cents on the matter. Of course, um, Marilyn also talks about the overuse of some of these areas, as you, as you heard, and asks the city to protect the Clark Fork River because it's one of the more overused rivers in our state, especially during the floating season when it's utilized for floating. It's not just the surfing, but it's also like the overall use, and you always see a bunch of people floating down the river. A lot of them always have like uh, six packs, and a lot of times um, people don't have a tendency to clean up the river and that's one of the things that with this open space they want to help promote more use but at a more spread out kind of thing as well so there was a lot of back and forth throughout this majority of the meeting um the whole basically if you were to just to take out this particular item that was on discussion this is an item that necessarily isn't on the consent agenda because this is something that they're going to have to go through the county to get approved for uh, this bond to be on the ballot. And a lot of the big things that the city of Missoula has been doing is that they want to uh, push this forward. Uh, and it had overall majority support of the city council, um, minus Jesse Ramos. Um, but this had a lot of, uh, but of course, you can form your own opinion and you can watch the whole meeting where you can have a lot of people talking back and forth on it by going on to ci.missoula.mt.us. Hey, ci.missoula.mt.us. It is the place to be for everything Missoula. And now I'm going to throw it to Josh for a little music. What? Oh, no. <laughs> okay, fine. Okay, okay. I bless the rains. <laughs> I, I bless the rains down in Africa. I bless the rains. Who, who, um, who, which band is that? Which is the band? You know what band that is. I know, but Are you I'm asking. Are my it, 80s music knowledge? Yes, I am. It <sighs> certainly is an ABBA. I know. <laughs> I know what I know what an ABBA is. Yeah, 
it's it it's it's father. It, it's not it's not I app think. is not a who. It's more of a what. Uh, but no, this, this is not. Is, this is uh, half of the song "Africa" by Toto, which is also the name of Dorothy's dog in Wizard of Oz, and it's spelled the same way too. I believe. Hmm. Yeah, Toto. Toto by Africa. By Africa. <laughs> <laughs> so the whole continent of Africa wrote Toto. Some could say that. I mean, that was like their biggest hit, wasn't it? Uh, it might have been their only hit. Really? Do you know any other songs by them? You make a good point. <laughs> All right. Damn. I'm going to throw it to a little bit of art. Um, and this is the art clip from the Clay Studio, which will be ending their run this Friday. So you guys better check out this art before it goes away forever. There's a cool little fox. Hey guys, welcome back. <laughs> okay, so I just wanted to tell you guys that all sorts of wonderful things are happening this week. It is our first summer camp here at MCAT. So MCAT is close to the public from about 12 to 5. We do have optional hours for anybody who wants to call in and set up an appointment between 5 and 8 p.m. this week. Um, next week we'll have our regular hours between 11 and 7. Um, we usually have orientation every Wednesday night at 5.30 for any new people who wish to incorporate with MCAT. So MCAT is a public access television station that provides training and opportunities for anybody who wishes to partake in the MCAT broadcast television experience. It's a nice little stepping stone to further um, broadcast communicating um, type endeavors in the future and also production. Anyways, uh, I just want to give you a nice little shout out to our Time Travelers Camp. We are still open for some campers in our Time Travelers Camp. All our other camps are completely and utterly full. Um, Time Travelers Camp is happening um, on July 9th, and it goes until the 13th. And this is from 12 to 5. We'll be teaming up with Historic Museum at Fort Missoula to bring a little history back on camera. Hey, guys. I just want to tell you that I'm, I'm really enjoying doing the show this morning. And I think it's about time for me to kind of throw it to a little bit of events. Um, we'll start in a little bit of uh, mad science happening this morning. If you guys are interested in doing any of those um, camps that are being hosted at Roots Acro Sports Center or Mismo Gymnastics, they, um, Roots Acro Sports Center has a bunch of themes happening this week. Uh, Monday is Maze Runner. Tuesday is Harry Potter. Um, Today is Mad Science, Thursday is Amazing Race, Friday is Animal Planet, and this happens from 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. for a full day, and if you're interested in the half day, hey, you can have your kid there from 9 to 12. It's a nice way of just kind of having these kids between the ages of 3 and 12 do some physical indoor activity uh, in a padded area where they can do flips without hurting themselves. Of course, Mismo is doing similar things along those lines. 
Um, if you're interested in 3D printers and doing some technology cool things, uh, public access at the Missoula Public Library is opening that at 10 a.m. This usually goes to about 1 p.m. and then they have another thing from 2 to 6 p.m. because sometimes they have a bunch of classes where they teach people how to use their maker space. In Power Place, Tiny Tales um, at 10.30 teaches nice little kids from birth to three years of age about reading and stuff. And that's happening in Power Place, which is Missoula Food Bank off Wyoming Street. Spectrum opens at 11 a.m. It's a great educational stuff. They have a bunch of summer camps going on along this summer, but Spectrum is 11 a.m. and pretty much opens all afternoon where they have Star Wars light play that afternoon. Out to lunch. Hey, how about that out to lunch? If you like music, you like to hear some sweet music, 11 o'clock to what 2 p.m. every Wednesday this summer. They have all sorts of things. And this particular afternoon lunchtime area is hosting the Ed Norton Big Band. So Ed Norton, get your jazz on this um, Wednesday today from 11 to 2. Hey, also Missoula Public Library hosts summer movie matinee at the Big Sky Branch. Big Sky High School hosts in their library uh, a movie, and they're going to be showing Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. You like The Rock, don't you? I love The Rock. Hey. Dwayne? Yeah. He's in that new movie, Skyscraper, that movie where he... Doesn't have a leg? Really? Yeah. I didn't he, notice that. Yeah, he's in... The uh, trailer. Yeah, he's... He's amputee in that? Yeah, he's an amputee leg in that movie. And he uh, basically... It's it's kind of like Die Hard. Just him jumping from that skyscraper. Yeah, it's him, him basically going from a uh, level to level in the most advanced skyscraper in the world. I'd play the video game. There's a video game called Skyscraper. No, I hope there is. Oh, based on the movie, I'm hoping. I'm Maybe hoping something. that there's a PS4 release of Dwayne the Rock Johnson's digital <laughs> audience skyscraper the game the movie. maybe the movie, uh, the game. I, I would I would totally like if they'd made like a Wrestlemania game but like in Pokemon Go format where you basically oh catch the wrestlers from the past oh you caught Andre the Giant that's such a brilliant idea because then you could have Dwayne the Rock Johnson like and on then, top of a skyscraper you'd have to go up to the top of the skyscraper and then each of the uh, of the Pokestops for the Wrestlemania would be a Wrestlemania yeah. and basically you'd have to pit your wrestler against their wrestlers that hold up the place. Oh, and you know what would be great is if they're also in Pokemon size too. So they're like they're they're like <laughs> Andre the Giant is an actual Pokemon? giant as big as Snorlax. No 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 he's just like a little tiny Pokemon size. Like you, you catch him you put him in your pocket. <laughs> you got Andre the Giant in your pocket. I'm just thinking Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Yeah. You got Dwayne the Rock in your pocket. You got a uh, Pocket Rock. <laughs> pocket a pocket a po- Pocket Rock Poke Rock Go. <laughs> I love it. Okay, sounds good. It. Patent pending. Um, Rose Park Neighborhood Leadership Team Meeting is happening tonight at the Senior Center at 5 p.m. Hey, if you're in the Rose Park neighborhood and you have any complaints about your neighborhood or you just want to talk about some things that you can prove in your neighborhood, they have a meeting at 5 p.m. tonight. Um, there's a two-hour class as seen on. So if you like those YouTube do-it-yourself videos, Zootown Arts Community Center is um, – hosting a series of these to help people do a a two-hour class to focus on projects that are easy to make and complete but may require new to you technology and eclectic materials Uh, class attendees will strongly encourage to personalize their work and create something that is unique and meaningful to them writers anonymous Missoula Public Library improve those writing skills at the Missoula Public Library starting at 6 p.m. tonight. And the adult writing group meets on the fourth Wednesday of every month in the boardroom starting at 6 p.m. Hey, you like comedy? Who doesn't like to laugh? <gasps> Revival stand-up comedy open mic night is happening at the band letter at 7.30 p.m. Come watch Missoula stand-up comics try their best to make you laugh or get up on stage yourself and try to your own jokes. All at the Bad Lenders. Last Wednesday of the month, it is free. And of course, I'm going to be at the City Band tonight, starting at 8 p.m. So if you guys like to listen to some City Band music, the City Band, the Missoula City Band, hosted by um, conductor Gary Gillette, will be at Bonner Park tonight at 8 p.m. Bonner Park. Hey, Gary Gillette was your uh, band teacher back in the day. Um, actually, I just missed the Gary train. I I didn't do band my sophomore year of oh. high school, which was the last year that he taught. And I, I wish I had 
jumped on the Gary train for at least one year because, you know, um, you know, I, like, I, I feel like the band really missed him. Um, but that was also, a, like, a time where we were doing a switch over with a lot of the band people. Um, yeah. yeah ba- band was still... Pretty, pretty Transition fair. times are pretty hard for a lot of uh, students as well. Um, Big Sky High School had a lot of different band teachers after uh, really? Slater left. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Slater was at Big Sky High School, but now he's at Hellgate High School. He's doing a really good job there. Yeah. Apparently, he took I the band to Carnegie it. Hall, and they played there. Yeah. Um, that's what Nelson's doing next year. Cool. Yeah, he's taking the, the band to Carnegie. Nice. Or did he already do that? No. Maybe. There's always a big band trip. A lot of times the band goes to California for the Rose Bowl. Yeah, no, that's the one that they did. That's the one that they did uh, the other year. Oh, hey, uh, could I give a quick shout-out, like just a freebie real quick? Yeah, sure. Let um, me uh, let's throw it to you. Okay. Uh, this is a quick shout-out to um, the uh, Gingers on Ice comedy show. <laughs> Happening uh, July 13th and the 14th at 7.30 p.m. at the Roxy Theater. Uh, admission is $9. Um, and my, my good pal, uh, Jacob Godby, is uh, starring in this show. Um, and you should definitely check it out. These two guys are hilarious, and they both happen to have red hair. Cool. And it's a great show. Check it out. Awesome. Very new. Um... And also, like, if you guys are planning on going out and about tonight, mostly they have a bunch of karaoke happening in the downtown Missoula area. They got karaoke? Oh, oh yeah. Every Wednesday, karaoke at the Badlander. They got karaoke at Dark Horse Bar. Um, yeah, all sorts of things. Um, but, of course, they also have uh, Blue October is going to be a rock music that's going to be playing tonight at the Wilma. Never heard of them. Don't know what they are. If you, but What's if their you, name? Say that again? Uh, Blue, Blue October. Blue October. I've heard that before. Yeah. There's always a color and uh, a and noun a usually associated with a band name. Are months nouns? Um, maybe. You know what? I'm gonna have to do some research. We'll have to do some research on that. You, you get back, all, get back I'll, to you on this. I'll get back. <laughs> right, I don't even know. It's I doubt it's a noun. Anyways, let's talk about some Thursday. So hey guys. It's Thursday now, but not really. It's Wednesday. Tiny Tales kicks off your Thursday with your kids who wish to be exposed to books and whatnot. Um, Easy Steps to eBooks is starting at the Missoula Public Library at noon tomorrow after, uh, t- tomorrow at noon. I-, I-, I try to say afternoon. Anyways, this class is an introduction o- and overview of eBooks resources available at the library. The instructor will cover how to use various e-readers to access the library's collection. Uh, Planetarium show every Thursday. It seems like the University of Montana hosts uh, a show at their planetarium, 1 p.m. and 2.15 p.m. Join for their community summer public shows. Lauren Spencer will take participants on a fascinating journey of Jupiter's Jupiter, including new distra- new discoveries. Whew. The Bob Marshall Music Festival. Hey, if you want to go to Sealy Lake tomorrow afternoon, they're doing a three-day music festival, 20 bands, 5, 10, 25, 50K runs, hikes, on-site camping, beer garden, and more. And this is all starting at Sealy Lake at 2 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. Hey, I like Legos. I like to like to bring Legos to life in stop animation form. And uh, every Thursday at 3.30 p.m., um, Lego Club at Missoula Public Library. Yes. I used to go to that, actually. Yeah, Lego Club. It was really fun. Yep. Uh, and then once um, MCAT moves into the library, because that's the big plan, of course, you probably heard about this a million times, is that Lego Club... It would be great. We'll be able to mix up all the Legos together, and then we'll be able to utilize a stop motion Saturday drop-in type deal th- with them as well. Uh, but huh? months are proper nouns. Months are proper nouns. And I feel like an idiot because I should have known that. Hmm. Go back to school, Josh. No, t- <laughs> um, yeah, you're just free from school for now. Until this fall, when oh. I'll be attending. Uh, shout out to the University of Montana. Nice. Um, thanks for already taking all of my money. Nobody left. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Predator feeding at Missoula Insectarium happening tomorrow afternoon at 3.30 p.m. They'll be feeding a cricket to one of the hungry predators 3.30 p.m. every Thursday. Join us as they explain and demonstrate how they capture and consume prey. Come see who is hungry today. 
2018 International Discussion Series, Jeanette Rankin Peace Center, known for their discussions, is doing South America by Luis uh, Marilic. Sorry about that. Uh, Trujillo uh, Cordova, uh, Jenny uh, Viveros, and Jorge Foguero Gonzalez. It's Jorge. For- Gorge? Jorge? Jorge. Jorge. Sorry about that. Whew. Okay. So they're doing a a big talk, and they got people from Ecuador, Chile, and Chile, and Colombia talking about South America at the discussion at Jeanette Rankin Peace Center at 5.30 tomorrow. Community concert with Superman and Wiz Pops. This is a family-friendly event that's happening at the Wilma. If you haven't heard of Superman, he was uh, pr- uh, predominantly uh, featured on MTV uh, a couple years ago. And the Wiz Pops is our local kid band here in the city of Missoula, which kind of got their start. And they travel around performing kid educational music. Um, and it's going to be great. It should be really fun, and it's usually a, a good. Um, I'm not sure how much it costs, but I, I do believe it might be free at the Wilma starting at 7 p.m. tomorrow night. But if you guys are planning on going anything after hours um, Thursday night, you guys can join um, be, um, Acoustic Avenue. Jackson Emmer is going to be at the Top Hat Lounge, and then you got. Um, rocking karaoke once again at the dark horse so that pretty much concludes all your events that are happening hey if you want to know learn more about events that are happening in the city of missoula go to missoulaevents.net hey what's going on in missoula this just go to this thing and you'll know exactly what's going on in missoula but there's always something you might be missing in the city of missoula but you snooze you lose sometimes but want to learn more information about Wake Up Missoula and other events that are happening in the city of Missoula, you can go to my website, wakeupmissoula.wakesite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice, we made you write it out twice. If you're interested in learning about more about MCAT and all our resources and our summer camps, you go to MCAT.org. If you're interested in having MCAT do any kind of events that are happening, go to How Do I Request Event Recording and we'll record your event that's upcoming in the city of Missoula. So, Without further ado, I do want to give an announcement that we we do have a live cut-in this afternoon at 4.30 um, featuring the kids of our Stop Animation Summer Camp this week. So we'll have that show, and then we'll have another big show on Friday. So I'm going to throw it to Josh, and it's going to end the show for me. So Josh, take it away. Thanks for joining me, and for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph.